Let's now discuss Chapter 7, Software Development. Part 1 looks at warranties and liabilities. The learning outcomes include Describe the pressure that software and mobile app developers face to meet increased demands. Analyze the different ways that software product liability claims may be made and evaluate methods to overcome these issues. Provide several recent examples of product liability and explore how organizations may reduce their, their liability. There are many causes of poor software quality. To overcome these problems, developers should provide a consistent method of approaching new product development using software engineering principles. It doesn't really matter if you use the waterfall method, agile development, scrum, or other techniques. What's important is that you follow a consistent process, designing quality into each step of the process. Experienced developers reflect on past projects and actively learn from the mistakes made, improving products over time. The level of quality is going to be different for a mobile application that allows you to shoot zombies versus a driverless car. Those are two extremes, but errors and glitches may lead to frustration in the zombie shooting game, while errors in a driverless car or in a NASA flight can result in harm to people. For systems in these types of situations, a higher level of quality should be allowed for, and developers must produce systems that overcome human errors, which will happen with any product. At the same time, developers are asked to produce new products, updates, upgrades, versions, etc., in a very fast-moving environment. At times, organizations don't have the resources needed to design a quality product in the time period allowed. The constraints of quality, function, and time add tension to the project. But for systems that can harm people, developers must steadfastly design quality into the system, even if it means delivering the product later. For something like a new release of Microsoft Office, we may be willing, and we always do, to suffer through a few bugs to get the latest and the greatest product. In effect, we pay to be beta testers of the new product. Microsoft knows just how many bugs and errors we will tolerate before we give up the product, and their developers design the products with that in mind. They sacrifice quality for speed. You can't do that with technology controls on a shuttle or imaging machines for CAT scans or MRIs. Those products must have technology that is free of bugs, accounts for human error, and work flawlessly time and again. Software product liability may be costly depending on the products made. Product liability extends throughout the supply chain from manufacturers or developers to sellers and retailers and so forth. If an injury is caused by a defective product, everyone in the supply chain is liable. People may be sued based on strict liability, negligence, breach of warranty, and or misrepresentation. Under strict liability laws, the defendant or the one who caused harm is held responsible for hurting another person, even if they didn't intend to do so. These rules go back to pre-union days when organizations would say they were not negligent or the worker was also negligent when the tractor tipped over so they didn't have to pay. By removing the intent and negligence aspects of liability, the laws made those who were responsible pay for the injuries, regardless of intent and even if they didn't do anything negligent. If you make a product, you are liable for foreseeable accidents from that product. All the people bring suit, all the person bringing suit, the plaintiff, has to do is prove that the software product or mobile app is defective and or unreasonably dangerous and that the defect caused the injury. 
Take, for instance, a mobile app that alerts you when you should take medication. If the app fails and you are injured by not taking the medication, can you sue the mobile app company? If it's an iPhone and Apple allowed it to be sold in iTunes, could they be held liable as well? They tightly guard who has access to iTunes, which actually increases their liability, as opposed to Google Play apps, which are community-led. Let's take a look at warranty laws. Most of the coverage at the national level is through the UCC or Uniform Commercial Code and the Magnuson Moss Warranty Improvement Act, which both attempt to make it easier to conduct trade across state lines. They also make it easier to enforce contract law across state lines, which allows nationwide distributors and sellers to have consistent expectations as they move and sell their products or services. The warranty aspects are often clearly delineated in state law. If you've ever seen the warranties that say, this warranty applies except in these states, blah, 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 which have different, often more stringent, consumer-focused rules. The state law is very significantly and it's important to get a lawyer, if you see a theme here, familiar with national and state laws. The intent of the UCC was to simplify, clarify, and modernize commercial transactions. The Magnuson Moss Warranty Act added additional requirements when a written warranty is made. These rules are enforced at the federal level by the FTC. Internationally, laws vary tremendously. Although, not, although most countries have contract laws similar to the U.S., enforcement, however, varies as do awards. Consult that group of lawyers you now have on retainer for more information. Let's take a look at this Western Digital 500 gigabyte hard drive, la drive label. The identifying information will help Western Digital determine if your product is still eligible for warranty. However, Western Digital says that the product warranty will be void if seal label or cover is removed or damaged. This protects them from being liable for you removing the label and causing damage or even replacing with another label. It also protects you and that the company has a record of the type of product you own, when you bought it, and what warranties apply. They may also require you to take the device to authorized service dealers so that they know you're getting consistent repairs in line with their practices. It's like Apple requiring that you take your phone to an Apple store, which is never conveniently located, and an authorized service repair technician. If you don't, the warranty is void. So you have to evaluate the risk versus the reward. Most sellers of any product provide warranties that their product will do what it is supposed to do. If the customer exhibits reasonable and ordinarily prudent care in using the product, then the product will do what it's supposed to do. If it's an iPad and you drop it down 16 hardwood steps, for instance, I've done this, then Apple isn't liable for the resulting cracks, which didn't happen, believe it or not. I didn't exhibit ordinarily prudent care in using my tablet. If, however, the flash on the camera on the iPod was defective and it blinded me, then Apple would be liable for that, assuming I used it as an ordinarily prudent consumer would be expected to do. Of course, who is the ordinarily prudent consumer? It's that very bus busy, reasonable person again. The seller also guarantees that they have not intentionally provided bad information because of a failure to ex exercise reasonable care. See here, our reasonable person gets another workout. Further, the seller assures the buyer that a product will meet certain standards of quality, as outlined in the click wrap agreement or other contract you likely signed, either in person or digitally. Further, the seller in, assures the buyer that a, a, the seller can then claim, can then breach or not uphold their part of the agreement with the consumer. If the product does not meet the terms of the warranty, the licensee or purchaser may sue or seek retribution as outlined in the contract. 
While these laws are intended to protect consumers, sellers are very aware of them and write warranties and contracts to minimize their liability as much as possible. The image you see is of a TurboTax return. Have any of you used it or tax cut or similar products? One year, TurboTax had a small error that might make a difference of a few dollars and a very few returns. They said they would pay any penalties and or interest associated with the mistake and they made good on their progress. TurboTax obviously must add and subtract correctly and within the rules and regulations of the IRS. If it doesn't, it no longer meets the warranty of merchantability. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Express warranties refer to promises that the seller makes to, to you. They may be made in a sales pitch presentation, through an email or text message, in writing, or verbally in person. This is the old used car salesman trick where someone makes lofty promises regarding a car or other product, and the product doesn't deliver on those promises. Or, as we will see in an Intel case shortly, an organization is accused of failing to deliver on its promises of a chip and a smartphone. The organization doesn't have to say it's a warranty for the promises to serve as a warranty. However, most of the time organizations get you to sign a contract or digitally sign it, saying that the entire agreement that you are signing is the only promise the company is making to you. It will expressly exclude all other information you have received. The company does this to prevent that used car salesman from selling you a lemon and to ensure that everyone knows the conditions under which the warranty applies. In the end, an entire agreement clause attempts to protect the reasonable expectations of the buyer and the seller by making everything crystal clear, assuming we read the entire document, as any reasonable person would. Implied warranties exist simply because a transaction occurred. If you buy a Chromebook from Best Buy, for instance, you expect that it will turn on when you get it and connect to the internet, assuming you have a wired or wireless network. You bought a network netbook that has wireless capabilities and you expect it to turn on and work. That's what anyone who bought the same netbook would ex expect. The goods are, in effect, fit to do what they are supposed to do. Similarly, if you buy a chair, you expect to be able to sit in it, assuming you have a flat surface, aren't beyond the weight height restrictions, etc. Further, let's say you bought a Dell laptop from Best Buy and the laptop included Windows 10. By selling you the laptop with Windows included, Dell and Best Buy are implying that they have the right to sell the laptop with a copy of Windows 10. They have secured any intellectual property rights necessary and you don't have to go out and get a license as long as it's specifically included with your purchase. If this wasn't part of warranties, we would all have to go out and get licenses for the thousands of patents that are in every smartphone. That's impractical, obviously, for a consumer. Here are a couple of agreements for products that we may have heard of. Let's look at Office 365 per, first. See all that fine print? That's page one of many pages. And it's not even for MS Office, it's for the online version. Have you read it? I confess that I haven't. Even Twitter has terms of service that we agree to abide by when we sign up. Here's one page of many shown here. Did you read it before agreeing? When you last updated Twitter, did you look at the terms and conditions to see if they changed? The terms of service allow Twitter to take accounts away from people who espouse speech that does not meet their guidelines. We agree to it and then they kick us off. Yes, we all have the right to freedom of speech, but Twitter can then get rid of me if they don't like what I say. That's how they use their, their freedom of speech to let their customers know what values are important to them. While freedom of speech is guaranteed, freedom to have a Twitter account is not. If we don't like how Twitter conducts business, we can go elsewhere. They can kick us out as well. The last warranty is a Dell hardware warranty. 
is page one of many pages of small text. Have you read it? Let's turn to a few recent cases involving warranties and liability. These are all from August 2017, and it's unknown how they will conclude. Most cases never go to court, and most parties to a suit agree not to disclose details, so we may not ever know the real story behind the allegations. We start with Logitech. A recent class action complaint was made against them regarding an older home video security system. Customers claim that the system is defective and does not do what it said it would do. They have written documentation that promises much more than the system could provide. Moreover, those who brought the suit said that Logitech made it difficult for them to get service, said parts were backordered, and tried to stall until the warranty expired. Of course, Logitech denies some or all of these charges. Intel is the defendant in this case. Quebec said that an Intel executive talked to one of their executives and said they needed to make uh, Quebec's branded smartphones using Intel chips. Both executives were aware that testing had shown the chips overheated, but the Intel executive assured his Cubex peer that Intel would fix it. Unbeknownst to Cubex, the problem was not resolved and the phones were made. Cubex had, Cubex had more than 35,000 customer complaints, said they would replace 18,000 phones, and had 43,000 phones which were held up in Brazil and Hong Kong due to the danger that the phone would catch on fire. They want compensation from Intel, and they want it now. Intel, by contrast, said that the rights and responsibilities of the two parties are specified in contracts. Remember contract law that supersedes anything that was verbal in nature? Intel says that the contract doesn't allow it to be a negligence case, a fraud case, or quasi-contract case, or conspiracy case. Both sides will have a team of lawyers interpreting every word of the contract. Are you a lawyer? Probably not. I'm not either, although I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Look that one up if you don't, know, if you don't get the joke. However, if you're going to be a project manager or an IT manager, you better have some ability to read and interpret contracts since you'll likely be manager, managing many of them. Think requests for proposals, RFPs, or requests for quotations, RFQs, and then the responses generated. Everything in the contract must be analyzed closely. The last case we will look at is Electrolux. Those bringing suit against Electrolux state that the product, liability, and some state consumer protection laws have been violated. They are claiming a breach of the implied warranty of merchant merchantability. Remember the implied warranty? A dishwasher should wash dishes. Instead, the plaintiffs allege that Electrolux sold defective dishwashers that catch fire and cause property damage. Obviously, a dishwasher should not do that. Further, the plaintiffs allege that ele state that Electrolux knew about this problem as early as 20, 2007, and at that time recalled several models in the UK and Australia, but not the US. The plaintiffs say that Electrolux hid, hid safety risks and continued to sell the dishwashers in the US without warning customers or replacing units. So we looked at two cases that involved overheating, Intel, and fires, Electrolux. Your product cannot cause harm to people or property. We looked at liability issues. Now let's briefly look at remedies, which vary dramatically from case to case. In general, however, remedies include compensatory damages or the difference between the value of the goods accepted, the smartphone or tablet or dishwasher, and the value the product should have been. The manufacturer may allow you to return the product, they may repair it, or they may replace it, depending on the terms of the contract. 
Ultimately, if the seller isn't satisfied, they may sue or go through arbitration. Remember those long, painstakingly written terms that we agreed to? Now those come into play. We may have to go to California to file suit, or we may have to agree to binding arbitration. Assuming we may bring suit, however, if harm resulted, like burns from a fire, then the purchase may be eligible for compensatory damages and punitive damages for pain and suffering. You may have suffered little if your notebook computer doesn't connect to your home network, but if your dishwasher catches on fire, you may have some problems and deserve more than a replacement dishwasher. Here's an interesting case that doesn't deal with technology, but I thought it was good to include for discussion purposes. Colorado Cannabis Users versus LiveWell in 2015. The users filed for breach of contract saying that LiveWell violated the implied warranty of merchantability for the products it sold. The marijuana, which the plaintiff, said, the plaintiff said contained pesticides, was allegedly unfit for use and didn't meet the guidelines published by Live Well. Therefore, the plaintiffs alleged they had paid an unreasonable amount for a product that wasn't fit to eat. To quote, here the ordinary use of the recreational and medical cannabis was to smoke it, and here it was not fit for that. This is about people overpaying for cannabis, overpaying for products that aren't worth anything or was substantially less than what they were charged. Here's one reason why I found this case interesting. What if they kept appealing the court decision? Say they made it to the Colorado State Supreme Court and one side or the other decided to appeal the verdict. Where would they go then? Think about it. Marijuana is illegal at the federal level. It's an interesting case to ponder. Incidentally, the lawsuit was dismissed in early 2016 due to a failure of the two plaintiffs to show that they suffered any injury from the allegedly dangerous marijuana. So we don't yet have a court precedence to use when evaluating marijuana and state legal sales of marijuana. It will be interesting to see the evolution of this topic over time. To summarize, Developers are under extreme pressure to get new products out as quickly as possible. Consumers expect immediate gratification and they want it now. Having a process in place that ensures quality at every step is a must for systems that may cause harm to people. As users, we must use ordinary and reasonable care when we agree to abide by a click wrap agreement. Clicking on I agree has the force of contract law, as long as you are old enough to agree and aren't coerced or tricked. If a reasonably prudent person at least had the opportunity to read it before clicking on I agree, then you should read it or be willing to take the consequences. Those who develop hardware, software, mobile applications, and other technology products face potential legal suits due to strict liability, negligence, and breach of warranty. Any organization that sells products to consumers on any type of scale should consult legal advice prior to offering a product for sale.